This is a Danger Entertainment podcast. DangerEntertainment.net. Danger Entertainment Podcast Network. Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun. And remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the history of bad ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. History of Bad Ideas, episode number 291. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. Picking out the velvet smoke between my teeth. Blake's here. You had some ribs? And burnt ends. Burnt Ooh. ends and brisket, baby. Oh. Man, I can't let this meat that's stuck between my teeth go to waste. That's what she said. You keep it between your teeth and just suck on that flavor for all, all night long. Yeah, because I don't have a beard, though. A beard <laughs> or yeah. a beer? Beard. Oh, okay. Sorry. I don't have a beard like Jeff does, so he can like taste it all night. Thanks for uh, oh, uh, thanks for bringing some ribs to us. Jerk. You're welcome. Jerk. He did say he was at Velvet Smoke. I did. I did send it. Before. Oh, I didn't I did see that. <laughs> send it to the group saying I was at Vel. I was Velvet Smoking. Oh, I didn't even see that. Sorry. I let you smell my breath. <sighs> thanks. It's wonderful. <laughs> You're welcome. Welcome everybody to dinner talk. Uh, I'm, uh, I already did that part. Uh, Jim's not here tonight. Uh, he is tired from walking on the, uh, golf course. They got rained on. Oh, poor know. guy. <laughs> is that what they call it nowadays? <laughs> so he is not here, but that's okay. Um, we had some sad news this week. Blake said. Rusty Taylor. Who's that? Voice of Minnie Mouse. Passed away. Oh. She was a great voice actress. Okay. Actually, pretty good. <laughs> I'm a little jealous. You should be jealous. That was pretty good. <laughs> and thank you. I forgot all about this. Thanks, Jeff, uh, yeah. for letting me know. Rutger Hauer passed away. Yeah, that was that was a bummer. That was a bummer. Uh, he was. What was your what was your most memorable role for him? Oh, most memorable, I think, is uh, d- uh, d- Blade Runner. That's what it's called. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he was great in The Hitcher. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the Hitcher. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's was, right. That was him, wasn't it? Yeah. Is that a tease for somebody's top five? It's not. Oh. <laughs> oh damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long since I've seen it. I just yeah. How uh, about the Lady Hawk? I know Lady Hawk. Remake. Lady Hawk was okay, but yeah, he was Lady a badass Hawk. looking kind of yeah. knight dude. I mean, when there aren't that many uh, that of that type of movie out, when you finally get it, you're like, oh yeah. Yeah. This is cool, even with Matthew Broderick. <laughs> oh, you said Lady Hawk. For a second, I thought you said Legal Eagles. Uh, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> two completely different movies. No. And I was like, that movie was awful. <laughs> Look was it up, that kids. bad. Oh, it was bad. I mean, it uh, was bad. It was a <laughs> legal thriller with some comedy thrown in. But really? Maybe they should yeah. have told them it was a thriller because it wasn't a thriller. <laughs> Really? Because the stuff was hidden inside the artwork? You don't remember that? No. Now I do. <laughs> he does now. Uh, I was going to say surviving the game for me. That was the first time I really saw him. Um, or I, rec- you know, realized how good he was. Uh, that was a fun one. I like that movie. I don't think I've seen that one. Uh, basically, they capture rich people, ca- capture homeless people. 
and they go hunting for them on oh, their land. Jeez, that sounds disturbing. It was really well done. Is that the one with Ice T? Yes. Oh my God. And Charles S. Dudden, The Rock. Uh, that was the not original a, Rock. That was not a good movie. That was a good movie. <laughs> You know that? Oh, this is a really bad idea. You want to hear a bad idea? Oh, yeah, let's hear it. Back when I was stationed in Spain and mm-hmm. I had a Spanish girlfriend. Mm-hmm. So this is my waiver, you know, in case many of my wife's, While you were married? wife's relatives are listening. <laughs> this No, this is when I was a single young man, young wild man in the south of okay. Spain. In the south of Spain. So on base, we had a drive-in theater, and I tried explaining the concept to my Spanish friends, and they thought, well, that's pretty neat. So we were there, and they're like, hey, uh, while I was dating my Spanish girlfriend, she's like, hey, let's go to drive-in. Let's go to the drive-in. I said, okay. I said, "Sí, vámonos. She didn't speak a lot of English. That means yes, go. Yes. So you. we went, and that was the movie playing <laughs> in the drive-in. Legal e- or oh, surviving the gate? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, and that was a bad idea because she's like, what the she's like, what the hell is this? Is this, this common for people in America to hunt the homeless? Uh, yeah, let's make out to this, babe. Come on, this is what well, we do. Those are the best ones to go to at the drive-in because you just ignore what's on the screen. You don't feel bad about uh, missing anything. Oh, Dios mio. I just picture this Spaniard oh going, God. her going, oh my God, I'm never going to That's America. Right. They That's hunt exactly. homeless. <laughs> is this a documentary? And I, can you imagine? She didn't speak English that well. And I'm sitting here trying to explain to her what they're talking about in Spanish. <laughs> and she <laughs> in the action on the screen. Oh my God, that was a, that was a bad idea. Well, well, and I'm assuming it, since it was on base, it was shown in English. Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, it was uh, pretty funny. Charles S. Dudd and got blown up on an ATV in there by oh Ice God, T. That's a horrible movie. That's a great film. <laughs> not for a date. No, <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> driving date with this. Speaking of drive ins, not, not Spanish tamale. That was a nice segue. Speaking of drive ins. I went to uh, the drive-in with my family this past weekend. Apparently, oh, they still been... exist. Yeah, they my family or the drive-in? I meant Both. the drive-in, <laughs> but <laughs> the wife hasn't gotten rid of me yet, so that's good. Uh, uh, I haven't seen that dog that you rented for uh, for a while <laughs> that you claim you own. Uh, anyway, so I went to see the Lion King. Uh, well, actually, my wife's like, "Hey, the let's fake, see. the fake live-action Lion King." Yeah, let's go watch the live uh, Lion King. I was like, "Ugh, what's next week?" I don't know, but it's going to be hot. Oh, yeah. This week was at least a little cold this past week. Yeah. When we went. So we went to see Lion King. All, uh, all three of my kids said, uh, from ages three to nine, said, we like the cartoon better. So they have good taste. Well, this is a cartoon also. Sorry. The animated film. This is animated. The original. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This movie, gorgeous to look at. It was not good. Could you have? Did you figure out what was the real shot versus the computer animated shot? I'll be shot? honest, I was kind of bored by that point. By uh, what point? Every point. <laughs> I'm about to say, I read it was the first shot of the movie. Oh, so was it? you were bored by that point. <laughs> <laughs> it was, here's, let me explain it to you. It was a, it looked like a nature documentary with, uh, with uh, Japanese mm. subtitles over it. Like the Godzilla <laughs> films when they put the English subtitles over it. Mm-hmm. That's what it looked like. Yeah. It looked like somebody was doing a very poor... Uh, Mystery Science Theater over oh, this. <laughs> I, I think what you should have done was gone gone and find uh, found some uh, hot Spanish chick to make out with. That could have worked. <laughs> could have worked. Or maybe just your wife. <laughs> or just talk about Rutger Hauer for an hour and a half <laughs> <laughs> with your wife. Uh, I will say that it was not good. Uh, I love The Lion King. Love the original. Probably my, one of my favorite cartoons. And the first, like, 40 minutes of this show was like a greatest hits. Like there was no story. It was like all the greatest hits from the Lion King, like the original, but like it just, it was odd to say like the editing was wrong. You mean they threw all the music up front? There was even that great much music. Hakuna Matata. That was later. <laughs> but like once they got to Timon and Pumbaa, it was better. It was, still wasn't good, but Timon and Pumbaa did a really good job. They added some friends to them. So it looked like a whole natural like environment that they were living in and ecosystem. Oh. Um, Seth Rogen actually was very mm. good. And whoever did the voice of Timon, I forget. Um, Billy Eichner. Yeah. Is that Billy Eichner? He did really good. How were the hyenas? Hyenas were actually better. They gave them a queen. Yeah. They gave them a uh, hier- ar- hierarchy. Hierarchy, sorry. Uh-huh. Um, and they weren't bad. No. Uh, now imagine them walking upright with opposable thumbs, and then you have gnolls from Dungeons & Dragons. Anyways, <laughs> you know, I was thinking that the whole time. Uh, so the, the hyenas were the best were the best part. Timo, Timon and Pumbaa were the best parts. 
And that was about it. You can't have two best parts. Okay, those are the good parts. Okay. Uh, and my wife would agree. Well, wait a minute. Women have two best parts. <laughs> their brains and their and eyes. Their brains and personality is what I meant. Yes. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, but I would recommend not seeing this. I would not recommend seeing it. It was not good. Ever uh, or just paying to see it? I wouldn't even watch it on TV again. Really? Yeah. Even my kids were like, eh. <laughs> like, do we need to buy this? No, good, because we got the cartoon, the original downstairs. Uh, but yeah, it was, I mean, be- it was shot be- beautifully how they did the CGI and then the thing, but it was not good. Um, there was no expression on their faces, like all the critics were saying. Well, because they're animals. Yeah, and again, it you looked... You can't a- give a human smile to a lion. It was like an animal documentary with dubbed over, t- dubbed over. <laughs> That's all it was. Did the mouths at least look like they were saying what they were supposed no. to be saying? I don't even think the mouth moves half the time. Was there a Mutual of Omaha commercial <laughs> during the movie? <laughs> did we have Marty Stauffer's somebody, Wild America? Somebody did say, sit boo sit. <laughs> so that was about it. Uh, yeah, so don't, don't go see it. So uh, that was my th- uh, critique of it. I don't think they're going to put that on the movie posters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know what I would say. I'm trying to think what it was. Don't go see it? Yeah, there you go. Oh, wait, they'll cut off the dot, dot, dot. Go see it. <laughs> Jason, Jason <Hobie. laughs> Um <laughs> God. Um, anybody watching The Boys on Amazon? Finished it. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm only four episodes in. Yep. I hate but, binging shows, but I binged it. Did you? I liked it. I take it? I did. Very well done. I know Jim binged it also, but he's not here to talk about I it. I should have it done by next week. Uh, I'm pretty much set on watching two a night. All so. right. Well, there's only eight episodes. Is so. there only eight? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So I should be done by the weekend then. Um, you know, I tried to see what all the excitement was about. Mm-hmm. They had that uh, available on Pornhub, but it wasn't for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a different The Boys. Uh-oh. That's with a Z. No. <laughs> well, I, I watched all eight hours, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Did it get better? <laughs> well, I had to pay for it at the end. I don't know. <laughs> was Carl Urban in it? <laughs> Ironically, yes. <laughs> <laughs> then it might have been the same one. I don't know. Uh, they did stick something. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, yeah, so it's about a uh, group of um, people that uh, basically superheroes are, are in this world. They're bought by corporations. Basically, the corporations run the superheroes. Uh, everything is, you know. And the superheroes are just as evil and greedy as normal people. So the boys go out to try, basically, whenever the superheroes step out of line, they take care of them. And uh, first episode, uh, you see it from both sides, which is nice. You see the one superhero being inducted into the seven. Yeah. The, and then another superhero, the, somebody the, the bright-eyed uh, young Anjoui who's Starlight. joining... Yeah. Joining the, uh, the, the corporation club, uh, and she's all gung-ho to be a crime fighter and finds out nobody else really cares about fighting crime. No. They just care about stock prices. And they're upset that they don't get enough points for their movies that they're making <laughs> on the back end. I did like uh, how Aquaman is a dick. The version of it's Aquaman. The deep. The deep. But he's <laughs> <Yeah>. Aquaman. <laughs> he's funny. Um, he's an asshole. Uh, the, uh, what is it? Invinci- the invisible guy. Um, uh, translucent. Translucent, yeah. Um, <laughs> not everything about him is uh, <laughs> Translucent? No, no, not everything is uh, in, uh, invincible about him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was, it's very well done. I enjoyed it a lot. I've enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, and translucent can turn invisible, so he likes to hang out in the bathroom. Uh, oh, I can invisible. imagine. But for him to be, uh, tra- uh, to be invisible, mm-hmm. he has to be naked. Yeah, of course. So, <laughs> so he's always naked. So he has to be careful where he stands. And he's not invisible. He's just camo with his skin, is yeah. what, like he explains to Jimmy Fallon. Oh. Thanks, uh, Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. It was. I liked it though. I I really mm-hmm. enjoyed it, and I read the books uh, about uh, fifteen twenty ep- issues. Yeah, I never read less. the books. So. Maybe it's about twelve. <laughs> the books are good, but sometimes they went a little over the top. Not that I was offended, but I was like, eh, okay, I'm kind of over. Yeah, not. It felt like they were being. Yeah. Just because they wanted to be shocking or something. Yeah, there was a female superhero that was a sex fiend, and they killed her by giving her an exploding vibrator. That was the one ep- uh, issue. Ah, okay. That was a little. I was like. I'm not offended. I just think it's, eh, whatever. Like, you're doing it just to, to be a shock. Kind yeah. of dirty James Bondish. Yes, but without the skill. Yeah. 
But anyways, yeah. So anyways, uh, if you have Amazon, it's a good show to watch. What if you don't have Amazon? Then find someone who does have Amazon and go to their house. Can you give me your username and password? Uh, Seven. Yeah. I'd say no. Okay. <laughs> I won't give it away. Tell me. <laughs> mm. I've, I've, got, I've got other things hooked up to that no. password, so <laughs> I'll say no. I do, too. Uh, <laughs> the boys. He has the boys hooked up to that, the other version. <laughs> No, not that. Oh. No. <laughs> Anyways. I would only watch The Man, please. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're not Kevin Spacey. Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, Hi, you talking about me? Uh, I'm allegedly, Kevin Spacey. Allegedly. Um, anything going on with you, Jeff? Uh, since last Tuesday, I watched The Boys. Okay. Uh, and then everything else was normal and nothing different. Okay. Blake, anything with you? Uh, I got two things. Well, yeah, married uh, one of two off this past weekend. Did you? Yes, we did. Wow, mm -hmm. on your daughters? Yep. Wow. Where at? It, was uh, it local? Uh, up at the chapel, University oh, okay. of Dayton. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. It was nice, yeah, until I get the bill for the open bar. That could be bad. That could be bad. <laughs> it, it, it if posted. I knew there was an open bar, I might have went. <laughs> Screw Just watching crashing. the boys. I could have went up and hung out at... Yeah, uh, the Dayton Chapel for. Uh... Hey, <laughs> was it like the graduate? Was somebody banging on the glass up top? No, no, okay. no one tried good. to interfere with the wedding. No, oddly, Dustin Hoffman was there. Oddly enough, yeah. Well, there are some there. You know, the the controllables could be controlled. Okay, and uh, and you know the uncontrollables are well. That's what they are. They're uncontrollable. But one of the uncontrollables, may I make a recommendation mm -hmm. for weddings, receptions? Okay. Uh, for those of you planning to get married out there mm -hmm. at some point in time, or those of you who are parents and uh, plan to have somebody getting married at some point in time, do not allow open mic toasting. Oh, no. Oh. no. <laughs> that is a major mistake. <laughs> How many people talked? Just don't do it. How many? Uh, probably about six people, and oh god, four out of those six. Well, actually, let me say, five out of those six really made no sense and was pretty stupid. And you're like, why the fuck are you talking in this microphone? Yeah, shut the hell up, sit down. Although every once in a while, if you let that happen, you might be uh, be pranked on Impractical Jokers. Mm, and... Well, I didn't recognize <laughs> any Impractical Joker guys there, oh, so okay. it wasn't good. <laughs> But you know, you know, like a, you know, uh, wedding tip number one: uh, when making toasts, make them last no longer than one minute. Make them nice, make them complimentary, and uh, make it from the heart. And if there is something funny, you know, make sure you can sum it up in five to ten seconds, and people find it funny. Um, oh, practice it first, and maybe bounce it off of somebody so them to say, "Hmm." <laughs> I don't like what you did there. Let's change it. <laughs> did anyone announce their pregnancy like in the office? No, but that okay, would have been good. cool. Uh, okay, actually, that, that would have been something nice in an open mic uh, session <laughs> that evening. Uh, that would have been better than what actually happened. Would have been better than what actually happened with most of the people that grabbed the open mic. <laughs> You're like, Jesus, crikey. How many people did you have? Uh, I think it was like uh, 200. Okay. 200 roundabouts. That's not bad. No, That's it wasn't too bad. That's not bad. But uh, but um, uh, the maiden of, maid of honor, the sister, uh, number two of two, uh, who's still available, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Highest bidder? I mean, I, she, she did. Uh, our, other, our other daughter did very well in her toast. And it was like it was it was like 60 seconds. It was heartfelt. It was wonderful. And it was funny. And it just went downhill from there. Well, and this kept is the planned worse, one, though, right? Worse. Yes, yeah, so it was one of the two planned toasts. Yeah. Did she bring props? No. Good. <laughs> Never bring props. No. And she did have a little piece of paper, a little habit on her phone That's that okay. she could refer and read it to, read to, which was good. Now, the best man, you know, it started off in a direction, and then it kept going, like, where is this going? What is this doing? It, so, it was, it, so, so it was like a story that you would tell. Damn it, you beat me to it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> you, would yes. en, you would enjoy my stories over that one. The best, okay? man so actually, tell me. best man accidentally walked into the women's dressing room. <laughs> it was awesome. It was great. <laughs> Wait, hold on. No. 
No, never, never mind. So <laughs> it's like, no, those are my my girls. Are no. they are they living local? Uh yeah, they're they're up. Uh, okay, they're slightly up north. And okay, I was just wondering if they're going to be local. Yeah, or southwest there. Ohio. Okay, still, that's good. Still in the heart of it all. Still, still in the uh, southwest heart of it all. Did you stay up there? Yeah, we got a hotel, got a hotel room, and you know, big block for everybody. Yeah. So it was nice. Some of my family came out, and we all stayed up there. And I ran my ass off, and I really didn't enjoy it until about one, two a.m. Saturday night when I was finally done loading and driving shit all over the place where I could sit down and have a beer, and I was too tired. I fell asleep. <laughs> With the beer? Yeah, because I, I really couldn't uh, partake in the the open bar festivities that I was paying for because I had to drive a big, you know, 10-passenger van <laughs> full of, well, kids, uh, nieces, nephews, and stuff. And it was kind of like, uh, I mean, I, it could have been more exciting if I was drunk. <laughs> you know, We don't but, recommend that. But I don't recommend that, no. But it, you know, overall, it's pretty good. You know, but after that's the best why you got to have toast, that seventeen-year-old nephew who can drive the van. Uh, and, not yet, uh, but um, you know. So yeah, after the best man's toast, which was uh, on a scale subpar, of, it was it was B minus. Okay, you oh, know, that bad. Yeah, maid of honor, I give her an A plus. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, best man, B minus, and then it goes from C to D to F to. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm paying for this. Give me the mic. Yeah. There's nothing worse than when you get the drunk friend of the groom who's out on the floor who thinks he's going to be funny and embarrassed and try to embarrass the groom, and it's not going the way he anticipated. Uh, and that's you our entire hear, friendship. Yeah, exactly. You <laughs> can hear the pin drop, and he keeps going, and there's a certain point you're just like, shut the fuck up and sit down. And all the other friends are like, oh, I love it. This guy's bombing so bad. Uh, keep going. They're, they're giving him, keep I going. Thought, I thought my brother-in-law was going to tackle this kid. <laughs> I am dead serious. I would have I would have paid to see you videotape that. That's right. And he's like Army Special Ranger trainer dude. So I'm like, I'm like, take him out. <laughs> Gladiators ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Contestants ready. Yeah. <laughs> So, so basically, uh, moral of the story is don't let the DJ give out the microphone for open mic toasting at your reception. Um, so if, since you brought up weddings, yeah, I was at a wedding. I shall re- it shall be re- yeah. uh, name or <laughs> the people should be nameless. Yes. But the best man, yes, uh, not really. He was not related oh, to me. No, 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 no. Uh, he. <laughs> this is the best part. He gave a speech. Yeah. Uh, and Rich just said another home run. And um, he gave a speech, and he was just coming off a divorce, or he was going through a divorce at that point. Ooh. Yeah. And he proceeded to explain that fifty uh, percent of marriages ended in divorce. Uh, I think you guys have a good shot at not doing that. <laughs> um, and I'm like, I'm sorry, what, what's happening what? here? Uh, what? And he's like, no, 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 stand up if you're married. Stand up if you're married. Bad thing. And then yeah. he's like, 50% will end a divorce. And um, me and my wife, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're struggling, but we're, we're trying to make it through. And that's all what marriage is. It's a, yeah. it's a struggle, but you're doing it together. And we're all like, cut him <laughs> off. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're going to the DJ. Cut the mic. Cut the mic. <laughs> he proceeded to talk for like three minutes. It's the it worst. Like and it felt like a half hour. Yeah. And it, it was about divorce, basically, the whole thing. And then he said, but I think you guys are going to be okay. Here's a toast. And then he's like, <laughs> open bar. Yeah. yeah there you it's go. like. That's a little raw for you there, Chief. Let's, let's, let's move back over here. Come on, buddy. Yeah. Marriage sucks. It's stupid. Go on for three minutes complaining about it. But you guys will do okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was the most uncomfortable I've ever been at a wedding. Like, oh. And you know, and I bet you everybody's got those uncomfortable yeah. wedding stories. And I'm, I'm is sure. Is that uncomfortable oh, wedding? Or man. is that. I, uh, we went to a wedding that we didn't know anyone except the bride and groom. Literally no one yeah. except the bride and groom. And we sat at a table and we're like, Hi. Yeah. <laughs> like, and the people around us, it was, and it wasn't like assigned seating. Yeah. So you sat down and then there was like two other c- people that sat down or two other couples and they were both like 30 years older than us, 20 yeah. years. And we're like, hi. Yeah. I, I had to go do the diplomat thing. I was Walk walking around. around, go to table to table, you know, on our, on the, uh, our side. And there's always, there's always those, that estranged 
a family thing going on that's kind of like on the side, but it doesn't Somebody really Somebody you don't ever want to talk to, but you, you have no, to invite them to. You know, not me, or maybe those those one friends of the people or whatever, and, you know, kind of stuff. And I'm like, you know, I got to go do the diplomatic thing and, you know, wish them all here and you know, do all that kind of fun stuff. And it's all good. It's all good stuff. It's you all. know, and, and, you know, if there's a good time to sit there and you're like, hey, remember the one time when uh, there was this asshole moment? Hey! Let's forget about it. Let's have a fun time with this reception. <laughs> I'm paying for this. Get out. Yeah. Here's a toast. Hey. Here's a toast. That's right. Everything's Where's that good. group's and his buddy? Get him over here. Everything's good. Ah, <laughs> uh, so what else was going on? Uh, Congrats. Thank Congrats. you very much. Congrats. Thank you very much. Uh, Gen Con. Yes. I'm going to Gen Con. I'm starting Gen Con off Thursday with a bourbon trail of Indianapolis. Oh, oh, that's a nice way to start. I'm going to two seminars in the morning, Thursday, and then I'm on a four hour bourbon tour. And then I come back, and I'm going to watch the uh, Eye of the Beholder, the uh, documentary about the art of the early Dungeons and Dragons, you know, TSR. Sweet. Since I'm a big fan of Larry Elmore and those other folk. Uh, speak of... Uh, Dun- That's if I'm still sober and can't you won't walk be. to the uh, hotel. I should be able to walk. We put but, this on our Facebook yeah. page a while back, History of Bad Ideas. Uh, mm-hmm. Give us a like. Um, they had a Dungeons and Dragons Stranger Things starter kit. Yeah. Uh, with the Demogorgon. Yeah. And uh, my local uh, virtual arcade uh, yeah. real, uh, tabletop place uh, had it in there. And uh, and you bought it for your son. If I can, No. <laughs> uh, but I may get into it because maybe at Trivia for Cincinnati Comic Expo, it might be up for a prize. Yeah. Mm. But also... At, at but so, so you're not going to play it, though. Oh, God, no, no, no. Oh, wow. Uh, that's so I, I got care about. I've, I've got my assigned missions from you guys for Gen Con. Right? Okay, I got, to go to, yeah. I got the VIP smash up for A A E G from uh, yep. Jeff here. Yep, I got to go get his free shit and buy a penguin game. Right, <laughs> the the, yeah, the penguin uh, yes. uh, faction. And then I got to go talk to some dude that Jason's backing on Kickstarter. What's I already his? got the thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Joey Viger. Said, Joey Viger. Yep. Joey Viger. I'm coming for. I'm coming for you, Joey Viger. So. And then uh, I finally got, remember the guy that, uh, he's a uh, miniature painter that paints on commission? Yes. Yes, you did who's, tell us Who's had story. my miniature since January. The miniature of yourself. The miniature of myself. The mini, miniature me that was at Gen Con last year. Uh-huh. Well, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I, I'd made contact with the guy again. I said, hey, uh, you still got my minis from January. Have you started painting those yet? And like, and I didn't hear anything from him for a couple of days. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I tried him again. He's like, "Oh yeah, how you doing?" Hey, <laughs> really? oh, I went to his page to make sure he was still alive. And apparently, he probably was busy painting this uh, Warhammer forty thousand army uh-huh. that he entered in some contest at some other convention. So I can understand why my two miniature me's <laughs> may have been on the back burner the back. for that. <laughs> I don't know how much he's going to charge me yet, but I'm hoping to get a discount since he's had them for seven months now. The good news is he just spray painted them gold. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> so he finally just started, and he's like, hey, what colors you want? I'm like, eh, go ahead and surprise me. I said, you know what? For shits and giggles, make one, one evil and one good. Oh, you know. that'd be cool. And he's like, yes, I can change that up. I already <laughs> did them. <laughs> they're so done. He, he gave me, they're, they're not done, but he gave me, uh, he sent me a photo. I'm going to pick them up from him at the... Uh, uh, at the booth he's going to be at, uh, not at the Warhammer 40,000. Yeah, Gen Con. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, um, oh my gosh, what's the uh, the miniature painting uh, booth that's there every year? They're, the miniature painting booth? No, the icons that, the, the guys that run all the shit. Steven's uh, on. No. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to look it up. We just call them the miniature painting booth. No, no, no. It's the, Peter it's, Dinklage. It's, it's, the big, it's the big company that makes all the miniatures. And the, and at Gen oh, Con, Tyco. They have, no, shut up. Hasbro. Oh, no. Jeff uh, will probably know. It's, it's, it's like they, they do oh, all the shit, fantasy miniatures. They have like art shop, paint your miniature for free demos. And yeah. Like, they're there. Warhammer? No, it's not Warhammer. No. Um, Axis and Allies. No. It, uh, Highlander. But anyways, for, for exciting podcasting and, and yes. keeping going, I'm, I'll show you. These are the, this is the photo that he sent me last night. He's, this is where he's got them started. Take a look at these. They're not done yet. The one looks like you have an O face. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm, I'm, that's my war face. That's your, oh, that's a very seductive war face. That's my, oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh. That's my battle cry face. 
That is not a scary battle cry face. Yeah, it is. Look at it. No, no. Uh, no, it looks like your O face, like you're orgasming. All right. Well, these aren't done yet, but these are like nearly complete. I will say they do look like you. That is pretty... it, isn't it weird? It, it is kind of eerie. It is weird. So when they're yeah. finally done, I'll, I'll take pictures and I'll, we can put them up on social media. Yeah. And, I uh, like that. Maybe while I'm there, I'll get a picture with the guy. His name is Man cool. Beard Painting. Man, ba- man, man beard. bear pig? Yeah, no, What's man called? beard miniature uh, painting. Okay, I like those. And that's it. You like that? I'm show gonna, Jeff those. I'm going to show... You have an O face on the wand. Jeff. I'm sorry. This is, my, this is my one evil, one good <laughs> miniature me. The one on the left All looks right, like he's orgasming. here. Don't those... Well, I guess it would be your right, but... Those aren't complete, but those are pretty pretty much near those done. Are, oh, faces? That's, that's an O face. That's a battle face. cry. That's a battle cry face. Exactly. No, no, no. Sorry. I'm not buying it. Although it looks like you might have had a stroke or something. <laughs> <on>. <laughs> See? There's something going but on. You know, but the, the whole point is that they look like you because they, they took a 3D of your yeah. head and stuck it on a... On no, a, that... Does look Doesn't like it you. Look like, isn't it? It's eerie? creepy. It is creepy. I mean, when you when you when I posted the uh, the unpainted resin, yeah, it, you know, you kind of look at it and you're like, you're like eh, eh, maybe, okay, maybe. <laughs> but now that he's got it painted and he's got the accentuation of the features, I'm looking at this and I'm like, holy crap! That almost looks like me in an animated Hobbit <laughs> movie. Uh, so, what are you going to do with those? Well, um, God, now I want to go. <laughs> well, I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna give one to my uh, nephew, who I gave all my mm-hmm. miniatures to as a surprise. Yeah. He's like, here's your Uncle Blake mini. <laughs> and then uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep one for myself, man. Well, you gotta That's keep one got if you ever happen yeah. to play at some point in time. That's right. The one so, with your stroke. I yeah, you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the evil. That must. That might be the evil guy. It could be. You know. Uh, uh, yeah. We'll see. Well, you know what. Uh I know he doesn't like the attention, but we're going to have to do it. Jason C. Brown's birthday was this week. Twas. Yay. Our favorite film director. Happy birthday, Jason Brown. And he really loves the attention. Number one fan, Doug. His birthday was this week. So uh, happy birthday, Doug. Yay. It was a big one. It was um, a birthday spectacular week. Yes. So happy birthday. Uh, speaking of Doug, since he loves the attention, our Twitter poll of the week on... Bad idea, at Bad Ideas Podcast on Twitter. Follow us. Give us a like. Uh, what is the worst anime Disney film? Reaper Miniatures. Oh, I thought you were going to say Games Workshop. No, and Games Workshop. <laughs> yeah, Reaper. Games Workshop was one I was trying Workshop. to think of. Not, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sure it wasn't Hasbro? <laughs> no. No. Okay. Kenner? Yes, Kenner. It was Kenner, Kenner, Kenner Toys. Yeah. We, we actually use old Star Wars figures to yeah. do that. That's Robin Hood figures. Sorry, that's what they did. They took the. Star they Wars. got the idea from us. Yes. Oh, is that what it was? That's what it was. Gregorian guard was Friar Tuck. <laughs> Not nice. Kidding. Prince of Thieves <laughs> movie. Uh, let's see here. It was uh, a terrible movie. So shut up. Should have terrible ideas. You're a terrible idea. <laughs> what is the worst animated Disney film? We had Planes. This is not Pixar. It's Disney Animated. Disney Animation Studios. I feel bad because a lot of people took me to task on this. And uh, Atlantis, the Amp- you... Atlantis, the Lost Empire. Atlantis, the Lost Empire. Chicken Little, <laughs> and Ma- Mars Needs Moms. I've seen three, uh, two and a half of these. Uh, I've seen uh, one of these. Which one did you see? I saw Chicken Little. And? Chicken Little wasn't that bad. I mean, it's not as good as most Disney movies. No. It doesn't fall, but um, of these other three, none of them I even wanted to see. And I voted for Mars Needs Moms just because it looks to be the worst. The trailer looks awful yes. and creepy. Uh, we had, in last place, Tide, Atlantis, The Lost Empire, and Chicken Little. The people that like Atlantis, they like it. Oh, yeah, there are some people who will argue that Atlantis is one of the best Disney movies. Mm-hmm. I've they're seen wrong, ha- even though I didn't see it. They're wrong. It's America. I don't <laughs> think I saw that one. Uh, I've seen half of it. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. I did it based on critics' reviews and that. Yeah. Uh, I was going to... Uh, Number one fan, Doug said, what about The Wild? I didn't even remember that movie. Oh, I didn't realize that was a Disney movie. Yeah, and it was... Oh, there's Home Run by Pittsburgh. Uh, Yeah, so I was looking... Was it by Josh Bell? No. He's on my fantasy team. (laughs) Uh, But I was looking at it, and uh, The Wild, after he said it, I was like, oh, that did get a horrible review. That might be the worst reviewed Disney film. I was like, my bad. Uh, and then in third, in winning 53% to 28%, Mars Needs Moms Beats Planes. Planes was awful. 
Mm. Planes was horrible. Sure. Well, Planes is a, a ripoff of Cars. Yes. Which from is the a Pixar world, movie. From the world but, above Cars. Yeah. But it, the Disney Animation Studios ripped off their sister company, Pixar, for a movie that apparently was stupid. Yeah. I've done this before. Uh, you know I mentioned I'm... this st- story a long time ago when Planes 2 came out. Yeah. About a movie critic that said they flew him out there to see Planes 2. And he's like, well, in his review, he's like, it's better than the first one. And he's like, I hate the first one, though. And they put that on the poster. It's better than better the first one. Better than the first one, one so-and-so. <laughs> Not put, I hate the first nope, one? Oh. It said better than the first one, and it was also on the commercial. He was <laughs> quoted. And he's like, I don't want to be quoted on the commercial for Planes 2. Well, if someone calls him on it, say, I did say that. Yeah. It was better than the first it was a D instead of an F. That's right. <laughs> you know, I think I, I saw the, uh, the the test, the visual test for uh, the one spinoff from Planes. It was called Oil Tankers. Yeah, it got sunk. But um bump <laughs> Anyways, before we get to listener feedback, we do have something. Blake? Yeah, speaking of uh, birthday gifts and et cetera. I this, don't know what this is. This is from... This is an uh, envelope. That is correct. Who's it from? I'm going to let you open it up. Okay, so I'm opening up an envelope. An Correct. envelope that was given to Blake to bring to the studio. Mailed. Mailed, Mailed. to Blake. Mailed. That's right. Ooh. It's folded up in a protective uh, piece of paper there. Here you go, Blake. Hope you guys are great. I can't read that part. Is that Jason C. Brown? Jason C. Brown. And it's an autographed picture of Jason Brown baseball card from Fantasy Camp at oh, Kansas City Royal. Oh, hold on to that. Ah. Oh, my. That's well, an action pose. It is, When man. he wins his Oscar in 10 years, That's right. we'll say, I got an autographed card from him. Right. You know what? That is awesome. So Jason C. Brown, a uh, great guy. He's been on our show several times. He, went, he, loves, he loves Kansas City Royals, and he went to their fantasy camp, and he got... They took a baseball card, and he autographed it. No stats, though. No stats. We can make up our own stats, then. Seven. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Seven RBIs? Sure. But, yeah, that is... I'm going to put that on Facebook no. right now. <laughs> you know, call it up from the Hobie League. <laughs> he uh, came up from uh, Billings, Montana, so he's okay. Oh, there you go. That is an awesome gift. That That is awesome. So uh, You can take a picture of that and uh, post it. I am. I'm doing that right now. There you go. Uh, so, so that goes into the Hobie Hall of Fame. Hobie Hall of Fame, right next to Clark Gregg and uh, Adam West. Adam West, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. Marvin Lewis, ex Bengals coach. <laughs> oh, he's in the Hobie Hall of Fame. Oh, that might be given away at the expo. <laughs> 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 so, one of the guys, uh, Marvin Lewis, just got fired this past year or stepped down, whatever. Um, His contract expired. Yeah, so he was a horrible Bengals coach for the last couple of years. Anyways, uh, and Marvin, we trust. No. Uh, one of the people in my subdivision was, uh, there's a buy sell page for our subdivision. And one of them was <laughs> Marvin Lewis autographed picture made out to Matt. If anybody wants this, it's free. <laughs> yeah. Name is Matt. And I was like, <laughs> I go. might take that just for the expo. Yeah. <laughs> that if might we be meet an, someone named Matt. Nope. It's in a Nicholas Cage bag of suck. Oh no. We <laughs> have to hold that till we meet someone named Matt. <laughs> it's just, I was like, that's a very... He's like, I don't even want money. Here, here it is. And then he gave, like, some other Bengal stuff with it. I got some other pictures. Here, take these. Did, did you get it? Uh, it's still up there. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think I will reach out, though. Awesome. <laughs> Why does this guy named Jason want this? Yeah. <laughs> Just say, my brother's name is Matt. Yes, that's it. Uh, let's do some listener feedback. All right, that's time for your... <clears throat> bomb listener feedback sponsored this week by not the first round of Democratic candidates debating tonight. The second round. Second round. Who second. knows? Ah, whatever. You know. That's well, actually where Jim's at. That's where he's at. He's on the uh, stage. Okay. He's running for office. Yeah. Why he, not? Is he truth facting the platitudes? Uh, they said 10% Maybe he's truth, truth mm. platituding the facts. You can't handle the truth. Oh. Could be. Down but anyways, it's actually sponsored by that 16-year-old loser that won Fortnite World Cup in $3 million. Is probably still a virgin, but not for long. <laughs> I'm about to say, is that, is that an insult? 
you virgin? <laughs> to a 16-year-old, it's like... I, ho- no, I got $3 million. <laughs> and to be honest, 16 year old shouldn't be having sex. I don't want any more kids out there. Let's go. Yeah, what am I thinking? <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you, Kevin Spacey? still Spacy? a loser anyways. 16-year-old. He's a $3 million What's loser. <laughs> $3 million <laughs> loser. Fortnite. What are you good at, Fortnite? Fortnite. Well, he doesn't have to be good at anything anymore as long as he... No. Well, he's got to be good at not overspending his money. Uh, funny thing, there's a story that he but. just bought a $2.9 million <laughs> yacht. <laughs> <laughs> or, I, or actually, it's a, it's a down payment for his uh, first year of... Uh, 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 uh-huh. College tuition. Oh, <laughs> he. Uh, there's another story that he bought a 1.5 million dollar Sour Patch Kid. So I'm sure those investments are really going to pay off. It was a gobstopper. <laughs> <laughs> it was the gummy de Milo. <laughs> uh-huh. There you go. <laughs> next next year when you uh, get his uh, was it what's his separation from his parents? What's that called? Uh, Independence. No shit. No, it's the a term, te- the, the legal, legal term. term when you when you, when you divorce, divorce your parents. Um, What's that called? I don't know. It's good podcasting. It's called a thing. <laughs> 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 Moving on. After his dad blows it all on weed and hookers, you know, hookers and blow. All Allegedly. right. Uh, we start off with the uh, number one, Doug. Can't give yourself a nickname. Formerly known as A Pans. Says Alita. Came out this week on Blu-ray. I was going to say it came out this week. No. Okay. On Blu-ray. Will anyone on Hobie be buying it? No. 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 Yeah. Sean from Pittsburgh Nerd is. There you go. Because he likes crappy films. Jeff, do you have any desire to see Alita? Yeah, I'd like to see it. I heard good things about it. Oh, Alita, okay. Battle Chick. How about... Uh, Battle Angel. How about Battle Valerian? Angel. Emancipation. About that? Emancipation. Emancipation. Yeah, yeah. He wants to be... Em- he'll be emancipated. Probably because, yeah, his parents will mishandle his money. Yeah, probably like, hey, why are you outside playing? Get in here now and practice your Fortnite for eight hours. <laughs> and eat uh, your damn gobstopper. But Dad, I don't no, want to really play Fortnite no, anymore. No urge to see Valerian. Now. Nobody did. Nobody did. Mm. Oh, it's funny. Other than to judge how bad it might be. Yeah. Uh, next we got from uh, The Sobered Geek. Mm-hmm. How long before Disney pulls the old switcheroo and starts animating their live-action movies? Six years. Can't wait for an animated Pirates of the Caribbean. You also, know what? I'd rather see a pi- another. A- I'd rather see an animated Pirates of the Caribbean than a l- another live-action Pirates of the Caribbean. Then we could see an animated Mary Poppins. Bit of uh, sugar and uh, bed knobs and broomsticks. Oh, that would bed knobs and broomsticks uh, and. Uh, Mary, Poppins. Mary Poppins animate it except for the parts that were animated and have those live action. So you'll have real uh, penguins in Mary Poppins. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Uh, did you, but you, without the dirty faces, so as not to offend people. With and and without sweeps. the terrible uh, cockney oh, no, wait, accent. That's, that's shitty, shitty bang bang. Oh. Shitty, shitty bang bang. <laughs> Uh, I did. Did anybody see the thing on uh, Facebook? The meme. It was a Bob Ross painting. They're like, I can't wait till the end of the new Mister Rogers movie when the after credits scene is Mister Rogers walking into a room and Bob Ross is there and it connects the PBS Disney universe. <laughs> I was like, that would be fun. Let's have a Bob Ross. No, we don't want Disney connected to there. Sure, PBS we do. No, public television cannot uh, deal with Disney. No, no. Is it Mister Rogers Disney? No. Dis- no, 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 the film. Isn't that a Disney Oh, film? I have no clue. Fuck Tom him, Hanks? Is. I don't know who made it. Okay, moving <laughs> on. Ah, <laughs> uh, nothing but top-of-the-line podcasting here tonight. Uh, from the Pop Culture Cafe, the exclamation over the E, I must say that hearing you gents talk about Canada makes me loaf. So little knowledge of our great country. A. So this is because Doug went to Canada last week and he paid $100 in Canadian money for IHOP. That wasn't even donut money. No, tire money. <laughs> tire money. <laughs> tire money. Uh, but, and then we got ripped on by some Canadians about it. Did so, he, did he have <laughs> Elsinore beer? I don't know. Sure. No, he had Molson. 
So anyway, that's even worse because that's all you have in Canada is molten. Just to let you know, molten money. We do know a lot about Canada. <laughs> Canada is the world's most educated country. Over half its residents have college degrees. Canada's lowest rec- recorded temperature. Yeah, but was... can they all speak English? No, What's that all boot? No, they can't that's all speak right. English. That's right. Canada you mean all the ones with the college degrees or all the Canadians? Booth. Canada has more lakes than the rest of the world's lakes combined. They do. What? They are lake crazy in Canada. I thought Minnesota was the land of lakes. That's in, their cheese. In 2012, the That's population the of Canada was around 35 million. Uh, in one place? No. Although I think ninety uh, percent of Canada live within a certain uh, fifty miles of the U.S. North Pole, border, the U.S. border, the North Pole. Yeah, it's the North Pole. Canada yeah. is the they're sec- all elves. Canada is the second largest country in the world by to total, Greenland by total area. Russia to is the largest. No, it's not. Greenland's not even an independent country. That's right. Did Canada conquer it? Yes. Or and or. Uh, the the Danish people is and Newfoundland still qualified to be Newfound Land? I mean, it's been around for a while, and just it really didn't discover. Tara Reid would say it is. Um, <laughs> and then finally, Canada's lowest recorded temperature was minus eighty one point four degrees Fahrenheit in nineteen forty seven. So, how's that compared to Alaska? So, I just want to let you know that we do know Canada facts. Those we learned at the library. Uh, and we re- remembered those. We did greatest, not look those up online. <laughs> greatest <laughs> export, Michael J. Fox? Uh, uh, Brian worst, Adams. Oh, obviously. Oh, yeah. yeah. Worst ex- export, Celine Dion? Oh, God, no, Justin Bieber. Oh, yeah, good call, good call. Ooh. Good call. Ooh. See, yeah, you guys give us Justin Bieber, and you expect us to want to know about your country? Jeez. He's got a point. Hey. He's got a point. Joshua Jackson's a close second for best export. So. Oh, Kobe Smolders. Oh, never mind. Joshua Jackson down to third. There we go. Top five favorite Canadians next week. Ooh. Didn't we try to give them Detroit or something? Yeah, they, they won't s- take it now. Then they won't take it back. But they- we did sell them Flint, so that was a better deal. Oh. So. They for how many? How many uh, raccoon hats did we get that for from Canada? It was seventeen. It was three uh, fox tails and a bottle of fire water. <laughs> Fireball. <laughs> <laughs> Fire, Fire water. Uh, Anyways, what else we got? Check out the pop culture. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm stumped by all that Canadian facts. Let's get some from Nisi. Uh, is it Nisi or Nicey? Both. Nicey at Nisi72. Regarding the carrot cake Oreos, I had three and decided I'd rather have the actual cake if I'm eating anything carrot. Good point. I decided to take the rest of the Oreos to work. I do the great stuff part. Oh, wait. I do agree the stuff part in the middle was awesome, though. That was like the cream cheesy type uh, mm-hmm. taste. Like a cream cheese. Whether it was real cream cheese, I doubt it. But <laughs> I don't think that was real cream cheese in the Oreos. I can almost guarantee you that. It did taste a little rotten. Eh. That's true, though. You're right. I mean, if you're going to eat carrot cake, just eat real carrot cake instead of... Yeah. Oreos flavored like it and have at least the good stuff. And Nisi is a uh, newer listener, and uh, we appreciate it because uh, she's very interactive with us on Twitter. You can be, everybody can be interactive with us at Bad Ideas Podcast. Yeah, go ahead and send more. Send us more little known Canadian facts. Oh, please do. Hey, you know I've seen posts from Craig Nickel. Mm-hmm. Is he uh, out from the government protection program up there? You from Jack. Novice? Yeah. Uh, he's actually helping search for those serial killers now up there, the two teenagers. Okay. You've seen posts, but you're not on Twitter. No, feed Facebook. Oh, okay. It's like he's giving away his location, because wasn't he sequestered in the mountains in a cabin? Yeah. The um, murder cabin? I mean, he's finally not snowed in. Did the, the snow finally melt, and he's actually able to walk out? That happens the, in the July. cabin? <laughs> in July. <laughs> Um, Did he get attacked by seals or something? So, you know those two serial killer teenagers up there that they're looking for? No nope. polar okay, bears. Okay, good. Anyways, so they're know. looking up there, like, and they're in the most remote areas. And every time they're thinking they're in a different uh, city or village, they're like, this is one of the most remote places in Canada. I always go online and look and try to Google map it and look at it. And I go, I look at my wife, I go, we could move there. 
Nobody's around. This is great. She's and like, you would be murdered. Well, by... no, no, no. They're going to capture them by the time we move. Oh, sure. Uh, believe that. Uh, <laughs> they keep going to the most remote places in Canada. Hey, all I know is I've read enough from Jack London. I ain't going up that fucking far. Who, who knew Manitoba was actually desolate? Uh, most people. <laughs> the one town had a thousand people. Woo. I think I might go. Manitoba. That's right. What else we got? Uh, let's see. But I don't think they'd have you. Huh? They probably you won't pass their immigration laws. I don't think you can get into that country. Damn it! Maybe on a guest <laughs> visa. <laughs> you're you're on the Trudeau banned list because, <laughs> because of this podcast. <laughs> we heard you talk about. Uh, <laughs> we heard you talk about uh, Tim Hortons. What's that all boot? <laughs> Uh, not enough tire money in the world for you. Nope. <laughs> uh, regarding favorite Queen songs from last week, uh, again from your new listener, Nisey. Yeah. Nisey, Nisey. Nisey. Fat Nisi. Bottom Girls. Nisey likes Fat Bottom Girls. They make the rock and roll go round. And I Want to Break Free is a close second. Such a great video. That is a good I, song, too. I Want to Break Free is excellent. I will yes. agree with that. Mm-hmm. That's not on the Highlander soundtrack. It is not. From Heno, El Heno. The Act- show must go on. Show must go on. Oh, God, my voice just cracked. <laughs> Sorry, Peter Brady. <laughs> Somebody to love. Somebody to love. Somebody. I want Somebody. it all. I want, I want it, it all. all. And I want it now. That's right. Uh, f- I agree, Heno. Yeah. One, Randall Holt. One vision. Fried Which I, chicken. I, yeah, exactly. I was about to say that ends with fried chicken. And, From the uh, Iron Eagle soundtrack. Yes. Uh, yeah. They, they do some great soundtracks. Iron Eagle is not one of them. <laughs> but I think that song is on is, the Highlander album. Is, is on uh, or, or something to, what's it called? Uh, some kind of magic. Called love? Some or, kind oh, of magic. Some kind of, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's a kind of magic. That's it. Uh, somebody to love, again. Uh, uh, and of course, the I think it's an annoying song. Another one bites the dust. What? I agree. It is I not agree. annoying. It is Excellent annoying. Song. Yeah, song. one of the best bass lines ever. Uh, I agree with you, Blake. Yeah. That doesn't happen often, but I agree with you on that. Thank you. I mean, Vanilla Ice did such a better original of this. I can't believe that Queen ripped them off. Um, that's a wrong, different song altogether. <laughs> That was under pressure. I don't know. Under yeah. pressure. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> under pressure. And Vanilla Ice didn't rip them <laughs> off because Vanilla Ice's song goes dum da da dum da da dum dum ching, and that little ching makes all the difference. You know, I had the same conversation about this with my wife when we were, <laughs> wa- we were talking about Queen a couple of days ago. I was like, "Oh, he never ripped them off. It was a different beat." <laughs> she likes Vanilla Ice too. Yeah, <laughs> we were joking about it, right. how similar it was. Kevin at Cincy Explorer. I'm Kevin. confused. He's confused every week, isn't he? Jason thinks Scarlet Witch is boring. Ugh. Even though she basically whipped the floor with Thanos in Avengers Endgame? Question mark, question mark. Spoilers. <sighs> She's so boring. She isn't. She's I great. can't stand. She's Maybe it's the hot. actress, but I can't stand the character. Well, I can understand why you wouldn't like the actress, because she was in that Godzilla movie. Hey, 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 hey. She was good in that. <laughs> hey man, I, did you see that uh, memes got where it's her, uh, Hem, Hem, uh, Hemsworth? Oh yeah, the whole guys, yeah, all the guys. Chris and Evans her. is just it's staring sh- at her cleavage. Well, it's kind of hard not to. She didn't have a lot. Holy moly, that thing was like half missing. Um, her cleavage from- was half missing. <laughs> no, her <laughs> she, her dress jacket or whatever it was. Uh, Scarlet Witch is just a boring character. I she don't is. Care. A, she's a great character. She's a great character. She's one of my favorites, and she's. Hot. Probably might be my favorite Avenger. Vision is my least favorite Avenger. Vision even in the movies. Yeah, he's so pussy whipped by he, her. It's not even that. He's just awful. And he <laughs> wore a sweater. Come on. Oh, yeah, you're right. Any superhero that wears a sweater. Fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless you're from Canada, then it's required. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you well, you, or you know, you'll get hypothermia. <laughs> I'm Captain Canada. Yeah. Uh, maybe he was trying to go uh, across uh, and- Antarctica. Worsley would have survived. <laughs> Or maybe he read Jack London and wanted to go across the Yukon. Yeah. There you go. Uh, all, the, all in all, bad idea. All right. Uh, meow God. Um, yeah. Meow God. Um, if you pen. wake up one day mm. and discovered you now have game-like stats... 
i.e. strength, dexterity, constitution, wisdom, intelligence, charisma, and he throws in luck. And an average mundane human stat is 10 to 15. Incorrect. The mundane human stat in Dungeons & Dragons is 10 and 11. Oh, no, wait, 9 and 10. Well, wait, 10 and 11. 10 is the average. But you may have an 8 in all categories to start. Which would you level up first? Well, how many points do you get, Meow God? Well, That's an important piece of information you, you get left to, out. I'm assuming one. You get to level, or two, because then you, your plus you're, goes you're, up. You're, you're yeah. minus one for the stats. Then yeah. you can at least go to zero. Yes. I love how Jason is looking at me like, what the fuck are you So which about? one would you move up to zero first before you gain more uh, experience? In real life or from a game character? See, that I don't know. That in real means, life. This is real life. In real, if you life, wake in real up, life. If you wake up and discover. I don't know. I already have a minus one to intelligence, so I probably would make the wrong choice. <laughs> so I probably goes with strength if I'm stupid, right? You might. Uh, I won't be strong. I would... I'm you going, know, honestly, in this world we live in, charisma is actually the most important stat. I was going luck. Charisma for social media purposes? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, you can be stupid as fuck, but if you're charismatic, you can make money. I'm going right. luck. I'm going luck. That's mine. Yeah, there you go. All right, thank you, Meow God. Oh, you know what time it is. Oh, I was gonna say start the sexy music, but Jason, Jason's I, too busy. Oh, doing that. This is my Blake O face. I'm going into battle. Oh, oh, oh. 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 This is my mini me. Oh, <laughs> mini me, mm, mini me. Any of that? Mm. Take my mini me, Jeff. <laughs> My one good mini me and my one bad, mm-hmm. my naughty, which <laughs> naughty <laughs> mini me. <laughs> Anyways, uh, obviously it's time for Nick Albright mm. minus the sexy music. Sorry, yeah. Nick, where our production specialist is uh, Brown, on vacation this week. He says, "How Dust. would you rank the three seasons of Stranger Things?" Did you listen to last week's episode? Oh wait, he's not asking for my opinion. No, Jeff's. He's asking I don't for know. Jeff's. It doesn't doesn't start off with uh, anything. Jefferino. It doesn't How say that. How would you rank the three seasons? Well, of Stranger Things. Uh, well, obviously it's to you because it says hashtag you are on top of my poll. Hashtag let's go poll deep. So Jeff, how would you rank the three seasons? One, three, two. One, three, two. Okay. So one is the best. One is the best. I think we agree. Okay. That's what I said last week. Okay. What else? Did you get around to watching all three? Yes. Okay, I've seen good. Them all. all right, I couldn't remember. We're going to skip the next one. We're going to skip the next For one. For Jim. We'll do that next week. Dip man, yes. fuck off. <laughs> Professor number one and Dr. Wow. number one. Yes. Sorry, Dip man. That was a, a joke. All right. It's going to be uncomfortable on your one. radio show tomorrow. Yeah, I know. It's going to be. Professor number one and doctor number one. Uh, when the Curse of Oak Island finally ends its television run. Well, that's a little presumptuous, isn't it? You don't think it'll ever run end? And it is revealed that they have found nothing of importance on the island. I think that's lies. They found buttons. buttons. <laughs> From <And> Levi's. Wood. <laughs> yeah. Wood. They found a lot of wood. A lot of buried wood. Some driftwood came in. Buried wood. Yeah. Will Blake realize he has wasted the last seven years of his life? Blake? I think I've already realized I've wasted <laughs> the last seven years of my life. I mean, he's been this. married. And I've been married. So what do you else expect I mean, me to do? After marriage, isn't Curse of Oak Island something to look forward to? Exactly. If only his wife could find the wood. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, uh, you know... <laughs> we talked about that last week. <laughs> well, when you're married and that's a four, you know, foreplay for an exciting evening. Look, honey, look for the buried wood. <laughs> look for the buttons. <laughs> look for the buttons. There's buried wood down there. You got buttons on your jeans? That's too complicated. Fuck it. I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. <laughs> She's like, it's like real life. I dig for something and there's nothing there but disappointment. <laughs> It's okay, Blake. It's okay. Disappointment. Happens down to... Blake's pants. 
on the <laughs> next episode of Curse of Oak Island. Does he know how every episode starts? <laughs> a button down the well of Oak Island. Could it be the buried treasure? Is this the Templar connection? No, it isn't. No, <laughs> no, not at all. No, nope, not at all. Have a good day. <laughs> is this the emptiness in Blake's soul? Yep, yep, yep it, it is. Yep, it much. is. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. Yeah. Well, let's move on. It's time for another installment of the news of the week. Per the rap, wiggity wiggity whack. Wiggity wiggity whack. HBO dropped the trailer for Westworld Season 3 during San Diego Comic-Con last week, revealing way more details about the next installment of the sci-fi series from Jonathan Nola and Lisa Joy. I didn't think you would have trouble saying the word sci-fi. Sci-fi. But the one thing the action-packed video set to Vera Lynn's We'll Meet Again didn't tell fans exactly when the show will return. HBO program in chief Casey Bloys stated first half of 2020, which is, I think, when the last season started, right? It was January, February? I don't remember. Uh, during a view at the Television Critics Association. And for those wondering, yes, Vera Lynn's We'll Meet Again is referred to in Pink Floyd's The Wall. Uh, regarding people, uh, familiar faces that might return, including dead ones, he said, if you didn't see them in the trailer, I'm not going to respond. Uh, the confirmed returns are Dolores, Maeve, Bernard, and whoever is inside Charlotte Hale's body, Tessa Thompson, uh, and the man in black. Uh, because Nolan and Joy signed an overall deal with Amazon Studios back in April, leaving their longtime home at Warner Brothers TV, fans have wondered if the Westworld showrunners might take more of hands-off approach for future seasons. Because they signed them for not only season three, is coming, but four and five are coming too. Seasons four. Bum, bum, bum. What? He said, don't worry about it. They're 100% hands on. We have deals with them for a potential fourth and fifth season. So the deal with them at Amazon, I believe, is everything but Westworld. It would be funny if it wasn't. Uh, Amazon owns Westworld now, HBO. Sorry. <laughs> you yeah, lost out. I, I don't think that can. Is that how work? it works? It's like a it... trade? Yeah, no. <laughs> we'll give you Creative <laughs> Galaxy. <laughs> A cartoon, a kid show for Westworld. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs> uh, and they're very committed to Westworld, so I'm not worried about losing their focus. They don't lose focus. Uh, the interesting thing is there is a new Nazi world in Westworld. If anybody noticed that in the trailer, that was kind of interesting. Oh boy! World War Two. Uh, you saw. In the- what was it called? Nazi world. <laughs> yes, it's called Nazi world. <laughs> Let me guess. It's a world where. You can play Antifa and fight Trump and Republicans? Down the hall. Get down the hall. Go down the hall. Down the hall. Down the hall. I told you. You're on probation. Down the hall. Not. Why don't you go look for some buttons, okay? Very wood. Very wood. Anyways. So there you go. Uh, I'm excited about Westworld. I know Blake isn't. Uh, Je- uh, and they said this one is not going to be more uh, a uh, focus on the timeline as much. They're uh, showing more of a straight uh, story. There still will be a couple time, you know. It's not going to be for, multiple timelines they to said there confuse might be, you as to what timeline is. They happening said there's going to be a couple, but it's not going to be like in a confusing way. They're more worried about the story. So she's not in the real world. Dolores isn't. She's in future world. It's another part. What? I'm telling Damn you. it. I'm telling you that's what it is. That's what it is. Uh, let's and see. even when she escapes future world, she'll just be escaping into another world. She'll know ne- the layers upon layers that she can go through just to get out. So she's actually trying to escape from Wish Mountain and Disney. And then by the end, you'll find out there's nothing left but Westworld. God. I would love for her the last episode of the series. She steps out. She thinks she's in the free, you know, free world. And a dinosaur comes over and chews her up. Ah, oh, dinosaur land. And that's now, how it ends. She gets into the real world. Takes four steps and gets hit by a bus. That works too. That works too. Or she finally gets out, goes to an IHOP, and it costs her $120. <laughs> I don't have any money. She realizes she's in Canada. I mean, what horrible ending. <laughs> oh, we love I'm Canada. I'm in Canada. No! My change is entire money. <laughs> I don't even know how to spend it. <laughs> Why's the bacon round? And it's ham. 
Um, there's only Celine Dion songs. <laughs> oh my God, this is Molson. Get it out of my mouth. <laughs> Why is <laughs> I don't care about your fucking heart going on. Stop it. They're not going to let us pick the Canadian of the Year anymore. <laughs> Je ne parle anglais. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, we're in Quebec. <laughs> Mort me, mort moi. Well, at least we can just watch an Expos game. Damn it! Oh, Come no! on! Ah! Well, but when they split time, we can <laughs> at least Tampa. watch the Rays. <laughs> the Montreal Rays and the Tampa Expos. Uh, well, at least we have hockey to keep us happy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, we don't, they don't win the Stanley Cup, Cup anymore. Oh. Oh. Well, I'm just glad they got rid of some Canadian hockey teams, like for good winter areas like Arizona. That's a yeah. good winter sport. Hey, are they going to drop the Lord from the Lord Stanley Cup? Because isn't that kind of offensive and impressive? And sexist. Yeah. Lordess. <laughs> what about Lady Stanley? Doesn't she get any credit? Yeah, let's call it the Lady Stanley Cup now. <laughs> oh, man, we're in Windsor. Anyways. <laughs> In Newfoundland. Oh, no, shit. we found that a long time ago. That's not new. Change the name. Hold on. You're on Oak Island. No! <sighs> Moving on. Uh, <laughs> tell us we don't know fucking things about Canada. We know Canada. That's it. <laughs> This part of the history of bad ideas brought to you by Canada. Come enjoy our lakes. <laughs> <laughs> the Ministry of Tourism. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got more lakes than anybody. <laughs> Yay. Just a big puddle. <laughs> That's all it is. Canada. We're not Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sales pitch. <laughs> well, then I'll go to Canada then. Her <laughs> <laughs> oh, strippers only cost seven, uh, seven cents on the dollar. <laughs> Oh, you can get a lot more in Detroit for, the, for seven cents. Matter of fact, I think that's the first time I ever did go to Canada was to avoid Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you staying in Canada? Just so you can be in another country? I don't want to live in. I don't want to stay yeah. in Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you staying in Canada? Because the other alternative is to be staying in Detroit. <laughs> isn't that what the bridge is from Detroit? Isn't it called the Bridge of Freedom? <laughs> Freedom Bridge. Oh, so now that we alienated our Detroit <laughs> listener. Sorry, hey, fuck Dad. Alabama. Let's go back to that. <laughs> They're awful. Or how about Alabama's neighbor? Mississippi? <laughs> <laughs> Georgia. Don't, don't, we have, <laughs> don't we have a Mississippi story? Ah, oh, Mississippi. Or, or am I jumping too far ahead? We'll get there. Oh. That might be saved to next week because we're running late. <laughs> Are we, though? I don't know. Are we? Uh, for Randall Holt, please discuss. R.J. Holt, I will. Per the Mirror Health in the U.K. newspaper, the U.K. is set to be hit by scorching temperatures up to 39 degrees Celsius. Oh, I don't my know. God. I don't know what that is. <laughs> what is 39 degrees Celsius? Uh, let's see. Uh, That's just times above freezing, by, right? <laughs> five <laughs> divided by nine. Add 32, something like that. Okay. I know you're in the UK, like, and we appreciate being on nerdly.co. 5 eighths plus 32 or 8 fifths minus 32? 5 ninths. Ah, Maybe it's just backwards. 93 degrees? Maybe five they're pints. dyslexic. It, it's uh, probably over 100 okay. is what I'm guessing. We're on nerdly.co.uk, so we will not be ripping on the <laughs> And <laughs> uh, my latest uh, tabletop review is on there, too, for Throw Throw Burrito. Anyways, uh, the 39 degrees Celsius, which we're going to say is hot, and while there's plenty of good advice online for how to keep cool, there's one suggestion out there that you probably shouldn't pay attention to, no matter how hot it gets. Some women might become so desperate for relief from the heat that they actually consider inserting ice lollies slash popsicles into their vaginas. The JJs? Believing it will help. Oh, um, uh, my phone did a calculation, yeah. said 102.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, that's like a typical August in Cincinnati. <laughs> No, usually we don't get quite to 102.2. But an expert is keen to let you know that it's a bad idea to stick a popsicle up your hoo-ha. Uh, speaking to Metro, Dr. Sarah Welsh, the co-founder of Hanix condom brand, warned women not to push 
put ice lollies anywhere near the janitor. <laughs> Dear God, why are we having this morning? If you're dumb enough to do it, let them do it. Here well, we go. What if you need to cool down your vagina? Mm, the, what should you use? Because it's kinky. The vagina, quote, the vagina is composed of very delicate and sensitive skin. Okay, if no you're a woman shit. and don't know this, <laughs> <laughs> hence things that may seem innocent to other areas of the body if they come in contact with the vagina can cause infections, irritations, and damage. We had a similar story in America when 50, uh, 50 Shades of Grey or Darker or whatever came out, yeah. and people were putting their ice cream up there, like soft serve ice cream up there, or regular ice cream, I don't know. Up their vaginal sheets? Yes, and people were, their lovers were eating them out, because that's what happened in Fifty Shades of Grey. Isn't that kind of, well, you, I guess you're going to have to change the bed sheets anyway. <laughs> eh, the, right. the ice can, wow. the ice can stick to the delicate skin oh, and cause real trauma and damage. That's it freeze. Dr. Welsh it would be like licking a, a frozen pole in the winter. Dr. Welsh continues to say <laughs> that the sugar in the lolly could potentially <laughs> up the natural pH of I'm the sorry, vagina. I'm sorry, the sugar of the lolly what? Sorry. Continues to say the sugar in the lolly could potentially disrupt the natural pH of the vagina. And if all that didn't sound horrible enough, there's also added concern that the lolly could break inside of you. <laughs> and then melt. It would melt. <laughs> Eventually. Yeah. Another doctor, Shuri Datta, a consultant gynecologist from My Healthcare Clinic, sounds fake, second the words of caution, shows some advice for keeping cool in the heat without harming your genitals. <laughs> My advice would be to avoid any foreign bodies in the vagina for risk of infection, including penises. Uh, actually, I've made that up. Uh, I, I think he, she was referring to don't put anything French up there. She had... <laughs> She added, I would suggest loose, loose cotton underwear and avoiding tight clothing to prevent any, any irritation and dermatitis. Or just go naked. Developing. A cool shower. Oh, dear God. Without internal douche and keeping well hydrated shows suffice. So you're not allowed to even douche? That's what it says. This is uh, is it, if you accidentally oh, got an ice lolly up there, can you <laughs> use douche to get it out? Why are three men talking about this? <laughs> Why? Because Randall gets us the story. <laughs> I was going to say, why are we reading this story? We're three idiots, male idiots, <laughs> reading about vajayjays and vaginal shoots full of ice lollies. Who the fuck uses the term ice lolly? The Br Brits. Brits? Hey, we're on newly. Hey, we're on newly. Okay, shut up. This isn't the first bizarre warning. Experts hey, have issued. Hey, do you have your ice lolly today? This might be the worst one. In do you need a bag, ma'am? Or are you just going to use that right away? <laughs> I do say. <laughs> in June, a nurse be begged ladies not to try and vacuum. Oh, dear God. A vacu what? Vacuum their period. Vacuum? <laughs> what? A nurse begged ladies not to try and vacuum their periods after two young women were hop hospitalized for doing just that. She claimed the women ages What's 19 and 20. What's that? Do ice lollies up the vajayjay. Vajay. It's not the first bizarre warning, they said. I don't want any more bizarre warnings. This is disturbing. <laughs> Females have been also... Fine, I'll skip. I mean, and, men are scared of vaginas to begin with. <laughs> females have been urged not to put garlic, parsley, bath bombs, and cucumbers inside them either. No cucumbers? <laughs> what? Well, they're diced. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Julianne? <Yeah. laughs> Why are... God what dang what it, about Randall? eggplants? Because, I mean, that's the only emoji I understand. Have you ever been to Thailand? <laughs> uh, <laughs> down the hall. <laughs> <sighs> what about it doesn't say anything about a roll of quarters? Oh man, I'm reading up on this uh, vacuum. No, part no, of the no, story. we're done. We're done. This with is over. truly terrible. I don't want to read anymore. <laughs> I, want I want to go to bed. <laughs> I'm done. Women don't do that. I don't uh, want. I don't want podcast anymore. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. I don't want to do it. I'm out. <sighs> So if you have a female perspective, if, if the women listen, no, 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 if the <laughs> they're not listening anymore. Yeah, they turned us off a while ago. <laughs> and we probably only have the perverts left. You're never gonna hear from <laughs> nice. You're never gonna hear from Nicey ever again. <laughs> Nikki, help. Nor Nikki. <laughs> so the female listeners, and we do have them. If you would like to, all be, two. If you would like, no, oh, Pam. More. Oh, three. And Pam will probably enjoy <laughs> this talk, knowing her. So, any female listeners out there, if you would like to mock the penis jokes, go ahead uh, and tell, tell us what to do with penises, uh, since we're no. telling you about vaginas. We're telling you what the experts tell you not to do. Yes. 
This isn't my opinion it of isn't. what not to so do. So it's 102 degrees. What am I supposed to do with my penis to cool down? Stick it in a... Ice cube tray. Ice lolly tray. <laughs> Ice lolly tray. <laughs> Just make big ice cubes with holes in them. These ice cubes are kind of creamy. They're kind of cloudy. I don't have any more. I can't do the next one. We're done. Now I'm going to drink some ice water. <laughs> Jeff. Do you like movie reviews? How about true crime stories, celebrity interviews? Well, you won't get any of that here. I'm a stay-at-home dad with four boys and a night job. I don't have time for all that crap. What I do have time for is browsing the web for weird and idiotic news stories. Then I bring my favorites to you every week along with my own weird life lessons and favorite podcast recommendations because, hey, sharing is caring, right? So subscribe to Odd Dad Out in Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, or your favorite podcatcher. And follow me on Twitter at Odd Dad Out and add a little weird to your day. Do you ever wonder when Spider-Man goes to the bathroom if the toilet paper sticks to his fingers? Do you ever wonder why Superman wears his underwear outside of his pants? My name is Imran. My name is Anthony. He's the jock! And he's the nerd. And we're your hosts for the Jock and Nerd podcast where we sometimes try to attempt to answer these questions. This is a full spoiler podcast, and we swear a lot. Check it out for awesome geek news, interviews, and comic book reviews. Visit jockandnerd.com. We are your superhero TV, movies, and comic book culture curators. Boom. Jockandnerd.com. Jockandnerd! Jeff, what are you doing September 20th through the 22nd? I'm going to the Cincinnati Comic Expo. You know, it's only 63 days away. Less if you're listening to us tomorrow. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> And even less if it's after that. Uh, Or if you're listening to us in November and going back and listening to us, it's already passed. Uh, But Kathleen and the Jimmy is going to be there from Sister Act. So, and Hocus Pocus. Alan Tudyk is going to be there. He's not from Sister Act. Nope. Ben McKenzie from Gotham. And Southland. And Marina Bakarin is going to be there. And we got some uh, artists and creators of comic, comic books. Daryl Banks from Green Lantern and Justice League of America is going to be there. Amanda Connor, who did Harley Quinn, Power Girl. Uh, she also did Power Girl in there. Frank Cho, who did uh, worked on Wonder Woman and Black Panther, uh, just to let you know. Uh, Jose Delbo, he did Transformers, and he also did Wonder Woman. Uh, Chad Harden, who also did uh, Harley Quinn. And Jay Fosgett. Our friend Jay. He yes. probably doesn't remember us, but we interviewed him a couple years ago. He, he was on the show, so he's got that to his credit. Yes. Uh, he did a lot of art for Fraggle Rock, so we like him for that. T. Franklin. She uh, created Love is Love, Bingo Love. I'm sorry, she worked on it. And Adam Kubert, which is a nice one I get, too, from Wolverine, Captain America, X-Men. So there you go. Uh, but yes, so there it goes. And there's a lot of great things. Did you see... Danger Will Robinson, Lost in Space set. The set is going to be there, too. I did not see that. Yep. Well, now I'm intrigued. Yes. Uh, So a lot of great guests, a lot of great artists and Harp Twins. The Harp Twins. Dirk Manning. So there you go. Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. It was his birthday the other day. Well, happy birthday, Will. Yeah. So get your tickets at CincinnatiComicExpo.com. It's at the Duke Energy Convention Center in Cincinnati, Ohio, September 20th through the 22nd. And play some trivia with Hobie. We'll be there. Win some great prizes and some bad prizes. And if you lose, you get to pick from the Nicholas Bag of Suck. So you never know. So we'll see you September 20th through the 22nd. It's time for Box Office Bombs. All right, we're starting off with an actual hit, not a bomb this week. No. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood opened this weekend with $40.4 million, which is where uh, they were predicting it, and marks the best opening uh, weekend for a Quentin Tarantino film. The previous record was held by Inglorious Bastards, which opened with 38.1 in August of 2009. Uh, It's the second best 2019 start for an original film, behind only Us, 
which opened to $71.1 million in March. Second best original op- opening for original film in 2019. Yes. That is sad. Well, most of the stuff that people go to, and I'm guilty of oh, it. I agree. I think the only things I've seen so far uh, this year have been superhero movies. Yeah, or sequels, yeah. And no, they're all sequels yeah. of super or... I mean, I suppose... Well, Captain Marvel wasn't a sequel. Was that this year? Yeah. Was it? But it was part of the MCU. Yeah. That's true. Um, but anyway, uh, it is the best start for a Leonardo DiCaprio film since 2013's The Great Gatsby, which most people said didn't do as well as they wanted it to. No. So it all depends on your expectations. That's right. Lowered expectations. Uh, But even though Once Upon a Time in Hollywood uh, was not a bomb, it didn't catch up to The Lion King, which made another $75.5 million, a total of $351 million, on a $260 million budget, thanks to uh, the Brigger family contributing Mm. to that. Sorry about that. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood made, as I said, $40.5 million on its opening weekend on a $90 million budget. Spider-Man colon Far From Home made another $12 million, a total of $344.5 million on a $160 million budget. Most profitable Spider-Man film. Has it broken the billion dollars worldwide? Yes. yes. So It's fine. So it's still in the MCU for the next movie? Yes. Toy Story 4 made $10 million, a total of 396 on a $200 million budget. And Crawl is still in the top five. Come on, people. Barry Pepper, baby. Made another $4 million, a total of 31 and a half on a $13.5 million budget. You know what that means? Crawl 2. Yeah. Electric Boogaloo. It means more... Is that, are the alligators or crocodiles? Alligators. More alligators. I thought at first you were talking Crawl, the movie. K- oh, no, no. Not the cool 80s sci-fi. Oh, no. K-R-U-L-L is what you were thinking. Yeah. Oh. No, this is Crawl. I thought they re-released it or something. Nobody wants to see that movie re-released. Okay. But he's got the cool weapon. Is that Tom Cruise? No, that was Legend. That was Legend. Yeah, yeah, that was not Tom Cruise. Sorry. I don't think anybody famous was in Crawl. Or anybody famous? <laughs> <laughs> if only we had Jim here to look it up. I am. I'll look it up. I gotcha. I gotcha. Who Go was ahead. in Crawl? I'll get you. Keep going. Well, anyway, coming up this weekend, we're blowing out the box office again because opening August second, twenty nineteen, the Fast and Furious presents colon Hobbs ampersand Shaw. Ah, oh, Jesus. So, honestly, this looks better than most Fast and Furious movies. Yeah. They they took like the two best parts of the original eight movies or the Paul previous Walker? eight movies. and No, Paul Walker was probably one of the worst parts <laughs> of those movies. So you're saying death is okay for him then? I, I'm saying... Jeez, Jeff. I'm saying even though it's sad that he died, it probably made the movies better. People will do anything to get out of contracts. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, And even though Private Santiago's death, although unfathomable to you, <laughs> probably saved lives. <laughs> <laughs> On a side note, uh, Dr. Number One wants to know what we think uh, Hobbs and Shaw is going to make this weekend. I think Hobbs and Shaw will make... You want me to tell you what they're predicting? $62 million. Okay. Blake, what do you think? I'm Jason Statham. <laughs> I'm Jason Statham. <laughs> I'm Jason Statham. What do you think he's going to make? I don't know. We're going to be there. I'm, 30 million? 30 I'm million pounds? The Rock. 30 million pounds? Isn't That's the, the whole only purpose... way you can tell I'm The Rock is because I sound nothing like The Rock. Welcome to The Rock. Wasn't well, the whole purpose of this movie is to center around a haka dance for Dwayne The Rock Johnson? Mm. Center around a waha? Haka dance? Or whatever that... Hawaiian. Yeah, I Not didn't Hawaiian, think then. it was. He's in it, though. Polynesian. Going to the island. Whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. So anyways, uh, moving on. Uh, it is expected to make 80 million. 35. In the week opening oh. weekend, eighty million. Well, it might. I will probably that next. I'm going seventy two million. I think. Uh, I think they pretty much know Fast and Furious does does better than I think it should. Yes. 
Um, it's pretty much the money making franchise out there outside of Marvel mm-hmm. right now. I don't think anything else is opening up this weekend. Right? No, there isn't. No one's going against it. Uh, sixty. You're one sixty. Yeah. Uh, cast of Crawl, not Crawl, but Crawl. 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 Ken Marshall, Lissa, Lissette, Anthony, Freddie Jones, Liam Neeson. <gasps> what? So what? famous was in it? it was is. it the Liam Neeson? Yeah. He was Keegan and Robbie Coltrane. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Robbie Coltrane, uh, who played uh, what's his name in Harry Potter? Harry Potter, uh, uh, the old guy. Yeah, uh, the, Hagrid. The, 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 Hagrid. That's yeah, his name. Hagrid. Yeah. John Welsh is in it. Don't know John Welsh. I don't either. Tony Church <laughs> and Dickon Ashworth. Just let so you know. <laughs> and this oh. guy, he played Neenog. Bronco McLaughlin. That's an 80s name. <laughs> Bronco McLaughlin is a great name. Better than the previous one, Ash. Yeah, first, Ashton. Whatever you said. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Moving on. All uh, right, so Liam Neeson is in Crawl uh, for uh, those people who are screaming at it saying, there's one famous person in that movie, you idiot. That's Roy. Anyways. Uh, then again, I'll put it this way. I didn't know who Liam Neeson was until Schindler's List. I should challenge the the cinema guys. Crawl versus crawl. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, let's do some top five. Jeff, what's that top five mean this week? What's the top five mean this week? Yes. It means we're going to list five things, each of us, mm-hmm. based off of the category that was sent to us by our Canadian of the year. It was Scott. Hey, did you know that they have the most lakes in Canada? I heard that somewhere. Yeah. Look. Did, did you know Canada is America's hat? It is. You know what? We have lakes. They're just puddles. Our land wasn't uh, moist, uh, wasn't soft enough to suck them all up. I don't know what any of that meant. I don't either. So. But anyway, uh, we are doing our top five road trip films. Nobody's taking a road trip to Canada. Yeah, I I looked up and there were hardly any. There were road no road trips to Canada. I mean, Into the Wild was the closest, and they go to Alaska. Uh, there was a Joshua Jackson film that I to- talked about a couple episodes ago, like six months ago, about uh, he-, he has cancer and he's on a motorcycle and he takes off takes and stuff. Yeah, uh, that was a good road trip. Wasn't there one about someone who walked across Canada? Didn't they make a movie Into about the Wild? That? Didn't they freeze to death? Uh, that was Worsley. That was Worsley. Didn't the-, the worst road trip, I would think, out there. I thought the worst road trip would have been The Covenant with Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, was yeah. it in Canada? Yeah, yeah. Grizzly bear attacks. Was that the Covenant? There was snow. That was in the Covenant? There was snow. That was like the river rifling huh? or something. That wasn't called the Covenant. Was the it? Revenant. Revenant. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the Covenant. No, no, the Revenant. Oh, uh, what? Oh, yeah, that sounds like yeah. a terrible, terrible road trip to take. It was. We've been together way too long because I'm advising <laughs> you. You know, the river, it's not Covenant River, it starts with an R. You're attacked by grizzlies. Uh, Jeff, what's your number five? Uh, my number five is Almost Famous. Oh. Okay. The uh, uh, what's-his-name movie about doing stuff. Cameron and Crow. That's it. Thank you. The Cameron Crow movie yes. about uh, when he... Uh, was a semi-autobot- on, on the tour bus. A- semi-autobiographical. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, about a, a young teenage uh, music journalist uh, well, touring down. around uh, with... Uh, of the fictional band Stillwater, uh, Stillwater, and they sing "Tiny Dancer" in the bus. That's right. That's the famous scene. Yeah, with uh, Goldie Hawn's daughter. What's her name? Uh, Kate Hudson. Kate Hudson. That's right. And and uh, the guy yells something about being a golden god. I remember that. Too. I am a golden god, and he jumps off the roof into the pool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. It was a good movie. Good hippie bus movie. I liked it. Uh, my number five is Euro Trip, a really funny movie. Oh boy, love Euro Trip. Uh, the last last part was bad with the Pope. I'm sure it was all factual. It was a comedy. It's enough out you. Um, <laughs> and yes, yeah, so I loved. Euro it was Trip. a funny movie. It was. They are the worst twins ever. They are. It was one. <laughs> it, it was one that made me laugh. Yes. Blake, what's your number five? 
Oh, it's a French film, red or blue or white. Uh, Have I talked about that the, enough? No, that's, that's Scam Jeff who likes oh. the French film. Oh, Le whatever. Journée de la Rue. What's your number five? Uh, Forrest Gump. Get the fuck out. No, it's not. It's a, the, it is a road trip. He's on the road telling I the whole that. story. It just isn't good. Yeah, it's just it's a bad a movie. Thing. That's the problem. I didn't like it when I first saw it, but I you learned to like it over See, I went the opposite. I went the opposite. The first time I saw it, I'm like, probably because of the soundtrack. I'm like, yeah. And then I watched it, and I'm like, oh. Right. And we all, at the end, realized that Jenny's a horrible person. Oh, yes. Yeah, even though she yes. was abused and molested. We're not even 100% sure abuser. that Forrest Jr. is I don't even think. I think it's a ruse. I think she found out, oh, geez, you're a millionaire now? Here, let me drop my son off on you and tell you it's yours. And it ends up that, that kid, his son can see ghosts. Yeah. Now, you know, now that I think about it, I'm crossing and, and number five, Forrest Gump, off my list. I don't like it. In The Boys. <laughs> we talked him out of it. We talked him out like of it. it. It's off. Uh, I'll replace it with Stand By Me in 1985. Okay. Okay, I'll give you that. Change approved. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what's your number four? Uh, my number four is a I Hope It. It's mm-hmm. a tie. Ooh. And I like when ties. I say my two movies, you'll know immediately why they're together. All right. I beat you right now. If you... 1977 and 1981, Smoking the Bandit and Cannonball Run. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say Smoking the Bandit and Smoking the Bandit 2. <laughs> no. <laughs> How about three? Or Cannonball Run and no. Cannonball Run 2. <laughs> no, the originals, of course. Yes. It would have been better if you Those said... Those are fun movies. They are. It would have been better if you said Smoking the Bandit 2 and Cannonball Run 2. <laughs> oh. <laughs> change it, Blake. Change Ooh, it. No. <laughs> no, I can't do that. Just put, are, I'll put on my honorable mentions. <laughs> just put a dash. There but they had an elephant. Yeah, that's true. That was so stupid. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> oh my god, smoking the bandit two was so horrible. It was. It, it was, was so smoking bad. The bandit three, three didn't even have the bandit in it. <laughs> it was uh, so bad. Didn't uh, Burt Reynolds not do it? Burt Reynolds did not do it, and uh, uh, Jerry Reed, Jerry Reed played the bandit. He's like he needed a paycheck. I get didn't to be he? the bandit. I get to be the bandit. Come on, Fred. I'm going to be the bandit. You know, it's bad when Burt Reynolds said, yeah, I'm not for that. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> well, apparently their idea for that movie was supposed to be like some uh, mental mistake thing with Jackie Gleason as the, the, the mm. sheriff, where he was like, it was supposed to be Smokey is the bandit, and it was like some split personality thing yeah, was the original is. Idea but, for the but, like, oh. but like anything else, we have to throw the caveat in there. You can't watch it on censored television. You have to watch the uncensored movies. Correct. Oh, yes. Correct. You know. You I have to get offended. I'm sorry. Because they're thirsty in Atlanta right. and there's beer in Texarkana. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, this one gets, uh, my number four gets funnier and funnier every time He's I, I down. Loaded Every time I watch it, it and I, I can't get enough of it when it's on TV, Dumb and Dumber. I love that film. Mm. And when they're doing the ketchup and the mustard, yeah. um, the second one's not good. Uh, but the first one is hilarious. Dumb and Dumber? Yes. You don't like that? When it, uh, Harry met Lloyd? Yes. <laughs> yes, that was awful. Uh, but yeah, so. That, was, that movie was Dumber and Dumberer. <laughs> Another home run by the Reds. Uh, Are they winning yet? No, they're oh, down okay. by like 12. Okay. Um Oh, that was a replay. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was three innings ago. He must be up again. Uh, anyways, so yeah, Dumb and Dumb. Uh, Jeff, what's your number four? Uh, my number four is Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Ugh. It's on my, uh, it's on my list. How are you that? Mm. It's on my You're, you're putting Dumb and Dumber on your list Over, and you're oh brother, looking Oh Brother, thou. Where Art Thou? An epic story of Americana <laughs> in music. I mean, it is pretty much based off of the original road trip story. The Odyssey? Yes. <gasps> Written by Homer? That's the guy. He's such a Homer. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. The original, followed up by the sequel, The Iliad. Actually, The Iliad was Or first. wait, hold on. The Iliad was first. The Odyssey was second. Yeah. yeah. The Iliad was the war story. The Odyssey was the road trip. Yeah, that's right. The Odyssey. Well, for one guy. Yeah. Yeah. That Ulysses dude. It's played by Sean Bean in <laughs> Troy. <laughs> Or brother, where art thou? Based on the Odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> what do you rank over, Jason? Dumb and dumber. <laughs> What's your number three, Jeff? I'm the Pater Familius. <laughs> oh, we're up to my number three. Uh, my number three, I have Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Oh, yeah, that is a road trip, isn't it? Yeah. He's going out to get his bike back. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, That's a good choice. Try like to that. get to the uh, basement of the Alamo. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Meets Large Marge. Oh, it's funny. 
Uh, my number three. Yeah. Is... Euro Trip Two. <laughs> he didn't make one. Uh, National Asia Lam- Trip. National Lamp. The sequel to Euro Trip. Vacation. European Vacation. Nope. First one. Oh, uh, that's right. I forgot about it. Vacation. It's in the title. It's, it's in my honorable mentions. Uh, Love Vacation. How did Love I vacation. miss that? I don't know. Because well, I was it? I was eating. It, you know, burnt <laughs> ends and brisket. That's probably how you I was distracted. It. Uh, what's your number? You're a man now, Russ. <laughs> 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 well, going through St. Louis, we should be fine. Bam! Roll them up! Roll them up! <laughs> uh, a lot of stuff happened on my family vacations in that movie, believe it or <laughs> from, not. Uh, which, Except for the dog pissing on the sandwiches. You put, <laughs> did, you, did, you, did your dad strap the dog to the uh, back of the car? No. <laughs> he probably no, no. gave it a good run for the first <laughs> mile. So. I can just imagine him trying to keep up with his little paws. <laughs> uh, what's number three, Blake? Uh, my number three, not a happy road trip movie. Mm-hmm. It's a Viggo Mortensen's The Road. Oh, God. I've never seen it. 2009. I heard good things about it, but I never actually that saw it. That is a depressing movie. film. It is. Very depressing. It is Book's much depressing. Kind of scary. And, you know, the, the, the nice thing about it is you just know that there is some kind of natural disaster in the beginning, whether it be nuclear war or fallout, but they're trying to get to the uh, coast. It, it was climate change. Scary, yeah, he's trying to get, no, it was fire, everything's going on because they're flashbacks of him. As soon as something happens, he's trying to load up as much water as possible in the house, you know, the kitchen sinks, the tubs, and all that kind of stuff for fresh water. And he, they're going to the southern coast, which for certain, which he believes is supposed to be better. And this is him and his uh, young daughter's trip to get there. And it is, yes, depressing, but it's good. The southern coast of what? South Carolina. Myrtle Beach. Oh, okay. Yeah, trying to get to Myrtle Beach. I, I didn't know if they were, like, trying to get to Tierra del Fuego or something. No, okay. just trying to go south. Okay. What's your number two? To me again? Yes. Oh, uh, 1985 is a sure thing. Oh, I forgot about that. thought about that one. That's right. In the days before Tinder, <laughs> just to remind you what a guy in the length will go through to get laid. <laughs> He's going to school on the East Coast. There's a sure thing on the West Coast. So he went cross country. That's right. With For- Daphne Zanguna. That's right. With his buried wood. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, his... Buddy Anthony Anderson out That's on good. the West Coast. And a good John Cusack movie. From oh, yeah, the it 80s. Be, it was before the 90s. That's right. <laughs> uh, my number two is Tommy Boy. That's my number two. I love Tommy Boy. And the more I watch it. Is that a road trip movie? Oh, hell yes. Yeah, you drive around. Right. Tr- that <laughs> that is true. In a car. <laughs> That's that, right. that slowly That's falls right. apart. <laughs> hey, what are you doing behind the curtains? <laughs> it was me playing for the Yankees. <laughs> Ooh, me likey. You take it off. Nobody's <laughs> watching. Excuse me. Do you know where the uh, gym facilities are? Oh, Tommy, don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, Bess is still... My favorite part is still when the deer wakes up in the back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Jeff, what's number two? Uh, my number two is Tommy Boy. Oh, what's your number one? Uh, my number one is the ultimate 10-hour road trip. Hold on. I want to see if you got it. Do you have it? It's the Lord of the Rings. That's mine. I showed it to Jason. Woo! High high five. High, <laughs> high five, five across the crust, table. Crust so, table. Yeah. So, so ten hours. You only saw the first one then. No, no, no. we're not confusing the Hobbit with oh. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yes, we're not saying <laughs> that the is Hobbit. a road trip though. <laughs> that is a road. That's a bad road. That's trip. That's a bad trip. Maybe. It's honorable mentions, but you know, Lord of the Rings, baby. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Anyways, number one for me is Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Yeah. Uh, I, knew you were gonna, I knew it was going to be on somebody's list. I love that I film. Love it. I think it's one of the I most like overrated films in the history of it's, film. It's I think funny. Lord of the Rings is the most overrated yeah. film in the history of I film. I laugh twice at Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. It's a, it's a dark comedy. And he laughed more during the Lord of the Rings. I did. Didn't know the That's Hobbit. Right. <laughs> Second breakfast. <laughs> It was funny. It was. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, honorable mentions, I had road trip. I'm laughing tri- now. I had road it. trip. I enjoyed that back road in the day. Road trip was fun. Mm, yeah. Anybody else? Let's eh. see. Uh, I had vacation. I had about Schmidt. I had, oh yeah. I had honorable, honorable mentions. I had Almost Famous. Uh, I had Little Miss Sunshine. That's a good movie. I had Kingpin. Oh, I King forgot Pin about Kingpin. Right. Logan. That's kind that, of a road trip. A road uh, Yeah, towards the Wolverine end. Wolverine road trip. The, yep. You I know? like that. Good one. I had a brother were out there on my HM, so I did yeah, like yeah. that one too. Uh, he had the color of money. Color of money. Uh, Apocalypse Now. 
kind of a different road trip. But <laughs> that is a different road to travel. But it was kind of a road trip. Uh, he had big fish. Yeah. That was decent. And uh, to Wong Fu, thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. Would Back to the mm-hmm. Future be a road trip movie? No, because where they were going, they don't need roads. Ah! Jeez. Uh. <laughs> Excuse me. Jesus. That's Get the right. fuck out. <laughs> That's what your humor does to me. It makes me uh, We had a lot of listener feedback. Def. <sighs> the side guy. <sighs> who is angry that it took us two weeks to read his last uh, top five. Well, here it is. Here it is. Oh, Tamara had one. Oh. Thelma and Louise. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh sorry, Dev. Uh, number five, the Cannonball Run. Yeah. Uh, number four, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle and Euro Trip. He hobied that shit. Uh, three, Grind. Number two, Tommy Boy. And number one, Plain Strange Automobiles. You are very similar so you to mine. Copied Dev's list. I did mine first, actually. Sure. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> actually, I did. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Uh, sorry. Uh, all right. That's all I had. Uh, uh no, uh, <laughs> there was people in Twitter too. Twitter. Sorry. I apologize. Uh, bad, uh, doctor number one had the only good road movie is Roadhouse. 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 But That's they don't not do really a, trip. a road trip. They're like it's a, a road a, movie, well, not a, a road trip. They're a stop movie. on a road trip. It is Dr. Yeah. Number One. He's right outside our studio. Just ask him. Oh, I was, I, was, I was trying to decide, should I just do a movie, uh, a list that has, has roads road. in it? So I'd have like Road to Perdition <laughs> and Roadhouse. And I was thinking about doing that list. Road, roadhouse. I road to Hobie. To. Uh, let's see here. Randall Holt. No, Randall, you screwed up the news of the geek this week. I don't know. I if I'm don't ready. think he screwed it up. I think we ran with it. He had the original vacation and Pee Wee's Big Adventure. He only had two. Yeah. These are the top five people. Uh, Nisi, yeah, uh, had number five, Planes, Trains, Automobiles, uh, Road Trip. Is that the one with Seth Green? No, that is uh, not Seth Green. That is Tom Green. I would much <laughs> prefer Seth Green. <laughs> is Seth Green in a road trip movie? Uh, he's in Without a Paddle. Okay, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number three, Blues Brothers. Yep. That's a good one. Number two, Thelma and Louise. And number one, Vacation, the original. Holiday Road. Holiday. Holiday. And that's all we had. Oh, come on. You didn't read my other list. I had a list on Twitter. No, I did not. Go ahead, Jeff. What is your other list? Oh, God. Now you're going to make me read it? No, I got it. Uh, also, we have Dez, the most intelligent listener. He had, or educated, uh, The Wizard, Easy Rider. Oh, The Wizard. Uh, Wild Hogs. Oh, now he's just trolling us. Smoke Signals. And Vacation. So just let you know on that Wild one. Wild Hogs. Come, oh, there's no way he liked that movie. Unless he was in it. Did he do have a cameo in it or something? Uh, didn't they make uh, Jack Kerouac's On the Road into a movie? They did. I never saw it. I never saw it either because I heard really it was bad. To. Yeah, didn't hear anything good about Great it. Great book. Bad movie. Oh, we, what uh, about the Zen of Motorcycle Repair? Is that a road uh, trip movie? That is. Or the Motorcycle well, Diaries the is. Or Motorcycle Diaries. Yeah. Uh, about uh, Shay. Intern Hackney. Hackney! Hackney! He had Zombieland. Zombie Land. I forgot that one. I didn't want to put that on my Dumb list. Dumb and Dumber, Tommy Boy, Almost Famous, and Over the Top with Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. For some reason, he likes that movie. Honorable Mention, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, Rain Man, and Little Miss Sunshine. Forgot about Rain Little Man. Miss Sunshine. All That's right. A good one. The other list I had that I threw out on Twitter was Road to Singapore, Road no. to Rio. <laughs> Road to Zanzibar. The Cosby. And- Road to Bali. Road to Morocco. <laughs> with honorable mentions of Road to Hong Kong and Road to Utopia. <laughs> the Hope Crosby uh, Road Cosby. movies. And finally, Kevin at Cincy Explorer wraps it up with number five, Dumb and Dumber. Number four, Sideways. Uh, they don't drink uh, Merlot. Was it Merlot? Yeah. They don't drink. Number three, Planes, Trains, Automobiles. Number two, Vacation. 1983, the only one that matters. Number one, Rain Man. Honorable mention, Tommy Boy, Road Trip, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, Howard and Kumar go to White Castle, and Paul. Paul is a good one. I have that. not seen Paul. I cannot judge it. You can. Oh, yeah, I am an American. You're right. Yes. So there you go. Uh, so there's your uh, top five for the week. Bad idea of the week. Oh, we already have our bad idea of the yes, week. Yes, what is that? Uh, open mic toasts. Yes. That, that is that number. What number is right. that? 
29? That would be up there. 29. We're <laughs> going 29. 29. The open mic toast. Uh, of wedding reception. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week. And uh, Roger says goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Addendum. Titles for the show. Uh, I got Don't Stick That In Your Vagina. Um, uh, you won't let us use <laughs> that. Uh, I got I watched all eight hours. Uh, that was Blake's porn. Ah, <laughs> uh, Gladiator's Ready. We Know Canada. Why Is It Cloudy? Oh. Uh, they hit an elephant because I was taking a drink when you wrote the, talked about that on the top five, and I was spit it had, out. They had an elephant. Oh, they had an elephant. I thought you said hit. I like that oh, better. No, no. They, 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 were, they were smuggling an elephant. They oh. didn't hit it. Okay. <laughs> is that what it's called? Huh? I oh, had uh, superhero sweaters. <laughs> I like that. Um, my naughty mini-me. Uh, nothing there <laughs> but disappointment. <laughs> oh no, we're in Quebec. <laughs> and crawl versus crawl. <laughs> I like nothing there but disappointment. That's the one I was leaning towards. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Change approved. Look at that. Roger says goodbye. Goodbye again. You've been listening to Hobie.